Since the release of the original Fujifilm X-T1, the X-T line has just been getting larger and larger and larger. Enough is enough. The newer and slimmer Fujifilm X-T5. Now this isn't an X-T5. However, I did get to try the Fujifilm X-T5 for about 45 minutes or so. So in this video, let's talk about what's new and what is not new, which is exciting because if it ain't broke, let's keep it around longer. Maybe the best feature of this camera is its size. Keeping what was great about the original X-T line and all most Fujifilm cameras is that they were small, that they were great travel cameras, great for hiking, great for street photography. And I felt that the Fujifilm X-T4 just sort of went away from that. It was very video centric, it had a flip out screen. But now with the Fujifilm X-H line being released, that kind of freed up the X-T line to go back to its roots of being a flip up screen, photographers mostly camera, with really great video features in this. We'll get to that. But first, I wanna talk about the size because when we were at the meeting, they actually had all the X-T cameras laid out. And I was picking them all up. The first thing that struck me is how small the X-T1 was. So the reduced size of the Fujifilm X-T5 is very welcome. So the processor in this camera is the X-Processor 5. This is the same processor in the X-H2 and X-H2S, which is a little smarter, a little quicker at picking up objects. And so that is an upgrade over the X-T4. This camera has 40 megapixels. This is an upgrade over the original 16, then 24, then 26. Why don't we go to 33? <laughs> we went right to 40 megapixels. So if those of you that shoot and want a lot of detail, you're going to get it from the X-T5. The grip on the X-T5 is slightly redesigned. Walking around with it, I felt very comfortable in the hand. Not as comfortable as the X-H line or X-S10. Those cameras have a very deep grip, but if you want your nice retro looks, that's what we're after. <laughs> we're gonna have to sacrifice a bigger grip, but they did make it stick out just a little bit more than the X-T3. And uh, if you compare the X-T3 to the X-T5, you can kind of see a little bit of a deeper grip. The EVF is a 3.69 million dot EVF that was improved. It has like 0.8 times magnification. That's better than the X-T4. It also has like 100 frames a second refresh rate. So you should get a clearer, uh, just a very bright experience in the EVF. Uh, in the heat of the shooting uh, in New York for the hour, I, it's not something I like noticed, but I'm um, look forward to, you know, in further testing, just like really getting in there. Finally, finally, if you upgrade from the lower X-T lines, you will get the newer battery that's in the X-T4. They made the camera more efficient, and so you can actually get more shots than the X-T4, which is great to hear. As far as size goes, the Fujifilm's width is about the same as the X-T1. However, its height is more X-T2-ish, X-T3-ish, and then its thickness, because it has a new battery, it also has the IBIS system in there, is closer to X-T4's width. So it's overall kind of is an homage to all the sizes of the previous cameras. Overall, the camera felt more like the X-T3 and the X-T2 in my hand than the X-T4. The X-T4 was its, in its own beefy, heavy category. And true heavyweight, coming in at a whopping 607 grams. Something else they told us was improved is the lag time between the eye sensor when the EVF turns off and the screen comes on. That's something that most mirrorless cameras, sometimes it's a little jarring. It takes a second for the little EVF to turn on. So this was improved over the X-T4 as well. Now there were some little improvements that were pretty cool to see. The first was the back buttons were just a little bit more robust. I felt that on a few Fujifilm cameras, they started to get flush with the body and tough to find without looking. So now the X-T5 has them out a little raised and what the back button, the AF on button on the back, 
is rounded. It's a, a little bit more robust, which is great. The dials also push in. That's something that is not available on the XH line. So the, the back rear buttons, which spin, can also push in, which is great when you're doing manual focus work. That push in is the default zoom in so that you can manually focus and then, you know, zoom back out. <laughs> Now on the X-T3, underneath the shutter dial, we have a photometry metering mode sort of dial, but brought over from the X-T4 is the movie to stills button, which is really great because it's a super awesome hybrid camera. The videos that I shot, it shoots in 6K30, and the videos were super sharp. With the image stabilization, this makes it a great travel street camera. Those of you that like to shoot a little video, and then do photography. Oh my gosh, it may be the perfect upgrade for you. Just be aware there are a couple of strange crops depending on if you do like regular 4K versus one that's high quality, which crops in just a little bit. 6K crops a little bit more. The other thing that's great is when you switch to video mode, it saves all your video settings. So that's a slower shutter speed. That's the film simulation you have set for video is saved and then you switch it back to photo, and then your classic Chrome is there, your Pro Neg High Standard Classic. The three-way tilt screen is back. One, you can tilt down like this. Two, and then if you shoot vertically, you can tilt vertical like so. And that may be troublesome for some people who wanted to upgrade maybe from an X-T4 and you love the fully articulating screen. I don't recommend upgrading if you really need that fully articulating screen. Uh, you X-T4 still has IBIS, it has a great sensor, it takes great video. So you may not need to, especially if you like the bigger size of the X-T4, you may not need to upgrade to the X-T5. Now the autofocus improvements are the same that were introduced in the X-H line. This is a little bit of a smarter. You can program it to recognize cars and bicycles and people and animals. Uh, so I didn't really have time to test any of that. It was also a pre-production model. But from the few th examples that I used, it definitely is much improved over the X-T4. It's a lot smarter. So I put it on bicycle for one moment and was waiting for bikes to go by. And um, it grabbed one beautifully. Most of the stuff that I missed was probably user error, not having the right settings dialed in, you know, like a stronger tracking, a stronger lock-on. These were all just quick tests, but... Uh, I was happy with what I saw, especially doing casual street photography and using a person. It pretty much would track a head or face and, you know, capture street images at 1.2, 1.4. I also got to shoot a little portraiture, which was great, a little urban portraiture. And here we could see a big benefit of that 40 megapixel sensor. If you're doing detailed work or fashion work where you need to show off like a jacket or sneakers, every little stitch. The Fujifilm X-T5 is great for that. Small, compact, walk around the city, do a whole photo shoot. It's just exciting that you have that much resolution. However, we should discuss that on a computer screen, on a TV screen, it's tough to see the difference between a 24 megapixel image Fujifilm versus the 40 megapixel. If you're just looking at them on a phone or even just your computer screen, it's only when you jump in and start diving into the photograph and cropping in, do, are you like, whoa, there's a lot of detail. Now, I wish Fujifilm would offer a small RAW. We do have a compressed RAW, but even the compressed RAW, although it you know reduces the file size, you're still getting a 40 megapixel, 7,000 long pixel image. Uh, some other cameras allow you to shoot the full RAW and then there's something called the medium raw, which is usually 24 mega, megapixels. And then like a small raw, which is like 12 megapixels. Going back to video really quick, uh, the camera does shoot ProRes raw, but externally, if you wanna shoot ProRes raw internally, you'll have to look at the XH line. But I think this camera is more photo centric and you're getting great video features. The best one being image stabilization. That is a huge upgrade over the X-T3 if you love this body type. The X-T4 to me is a completely different camera, but if you love the X-T2, X-T3, well the X-T5 for video is like a no-brainer upgrade. 
the image stabilization the, 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 <laughs> the image stabilization was fantastic. Now Fujifilm also released a 30 millimeter 2.8 macro lens. I didn't really get to try that extensively. There were only three samples to try, but I did get to put it on really quick before leaving and just try to take a picture of a lens cap and pull. Now, should you upgrade to the X-T5? Actually, the real question should be, is there going to be an X-T50? Oh, that would be cool. <laughs> uh, landscape photographers and wildlife photographers, an amazing upgrade with the new autofocus and also all that feather detail, yes. Street photographers, portrait photographers, and family photographers, general photography. It's tough to say if you mostly do photo, I think that you can save money, especially if you're like broke or you're a college student. The older cameras have beautiful sensors. Oh, I wish they would re-release those. The 24 megapixel X-T2 is one of my favorite sensors. The X-T20 sensor just went out, took a few pictures of my kids in the fall. Those pictures have enough megapixels and look beautiful. So you may not need to upgrade, I think, the camera is amazing. I'm gonna upgrade, don't get me wrong. <laughs> it's got great IBIS for travel. I shoot video, so I need that. And um, look at me justifying like the upgrade to you. <laughs> Maybe discuss in the comments, would you upgrade? Uh, are you disappointed that it's 40 megapixels? Would you have rather have seen a 26 megapixel uh, you know, repeat with all the new features and the IBIS and the smaller body size? I love that 40 megapixel sensor, but I don't know if I need that 40 megapixel sensor. You may be the same, but we can discuss. Overall, it's a great release. I was about to say a great re-release by Fujifilm because the camera is so beautiful. And I hope right in here, they really release smaller versions of these cameras. Please don't give up on the 20, 30, uh, there was no X-T40. Hopefully there's smaller cameras coming. Also the graphite edition cameras, you know, seeing all of them at the meeting, ah, they should re-release those too. But overall, a win, Fujifilm. And uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment of the X-T5. Can't wait to really test it, but it was super fun. All right, I'll see you guys next time.